Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content every single week here on YouTube. I also have an Instagram page at ByBridgetDIY. If you haven't already, feel free to follow me over there for even more content. I've got a really exciting project for today's video that I just can't wait to show you, so let's jump right in. So today I'm actually only doing one project and that's because we're going to be working with cement which is a completely new medium for me. I know I say that a lot with lots of things but for some reason this one just felt more intimidating than clay or candle making or other things that I've done in the past. So I decided I would just stick to something pretty simple but I am very excited to show you what we come up with because I've added of course a few personal touches to make it really really beautiful. We're going to be making a trinket dish today and I am really looking forward to how it turns out. Let's go ahead and give it a go. Typically when mixing cement we would just use water with the cement powder but I wanted to create a custom color so that's why you see me adding in two shades of paint here. A light teal and eventually a black to really deepen it up. I didn't measure but I'd estimate that I poured in probably about a quarter cup in total of these two paints. Now I am adding in just a little bit of water, kind of eyeballing it, just enough to thin it out and make this really easy to mix up together. When the liquid is smooth, it's time to add in a small amount of cement all powder. Again, I'm not measuring specifically here, but rather adding in a little powder, alternating with a little water until my cup is mostly full and the consistency roughly resembles a thin cake or pancake batter. It's important to note that the color you see here of the liquid is actually much darker than the cement will be once it's dried. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for something pretty dark, then go ahead and add in quite a bit more black paint than I did and add in less of the lighter color. Now that I've reached that thin cake batter consistency, I'm going to grab my silicone mold and pour the cement mixture in. One of the benefits of using silicone is that it's very forgiving and easy to bend when it's time to remove the mold later. You'll also notice that as I pour in the mixture, I'm pushing it down into the edges to get rid of any air pockets. When all of your mixture is inside that mold, you just want to make sure that you go ahead and kind of smooth out that top surface layer. Don't worry if it's still a tiny bit bumpy because in the next step we'll get it completely flat. This next step is very important, so make sure not to skip it. If you've ever made a cheesecake before, you might recognize what I'm doing. By tapping the edges with my fingers, I'm helping the mixture settle deep into the mold and also encouraging any air bubbles to float up to the surface and pop so that the final piece has a smooth finish. You might need to use a toothpick to pop a few of the bubbles as you go. If you're doing this right, it will likely take a few minutes of tapping until you no longer see bubbles surfacing. It will take several hours for your mixture to dry, but I would recommend leaving it overnight just to be safe. Next comes the most satisfying part of all, removing the silicone mold. You'll probably notice a very thin lip here on the edge where we poured and kind of tapped that mixture originally. And most of this you can just kind of break off with your fingers as you go all the way around. I'm also going in with some fine grit sandpaper to really smooth down that bottom edge. Thank you. 
Next, I'm adding in some texture to give this a dimensional marbled look using some glue. You'll want to make sure that the glue you use is strong enough to bond with the stone, but not too thin or too thick. Ideally, it'll bump up just slightly. I'm freehanding this design to keep it organic looking, but you can definitely sketch out something more specific if you like. To achieve the look I was going for, I extended my glue lines over the rim and down the side of my dish. When the glue has completely dried, I'm going in with brass gilding paint and a small, flat paintbrush to cover the glue lines. You'll see how much dimension and texture the glue adds underneath, as opposed to painting the lines directly on the stone. This step is pretty forgiving, but I'd still recommend taking your time just to ensure you cover the glue completely. I loved this project so much that I actually decided to make a second dish in a light gray shade. I think the hardest part of this project was just waiting for everything to dry, so I would definitely say that this is a beginner-friendly DIY and an excellent way to create a piece for your home that looks high-end for a very affordable price. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It was exciting for me to try using cement for the very first time because it has been on my list for a long time and I was feeling really intimidated, but I am so glad that I took that leap of faith and just gave it a go. I am obsessed with how my projects turn out and I would love to see yours. If you do give this a try, use the hashtag ByBridgetDIY over on Instagram so that I can see it and I can give you all the praise and love. And of course, if you have any suggestions for other projects you want to see with cement or any other medium, go ahead and write them in the comments down below so I can check them out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and definitely ring the bell so that you never miss another video. See you guys next time. Bye!